Week four is already here, and we are going to make sure you are fully prepared to dominate your opponent this week. Welcome in to another episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas Podcast. Lucas Wenzel, Cameron Lawrence, Tyler Plath, all back with you on this Wednesday evening, September 27th. If you're not subscribed to the podcast already, make sure you do that. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hey, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, turn on those notifications. You'll be alerted when all of our new episodes are up. You'll be in the loop on every single piece of new content we have for you every single day. FF fellas on Twitter, the FF fellas on Instagram, fantasy football fellas, Facebook, YouTube here, and TikTok. We're going to break down the best and worst matchups ahead of week four. We're going to close it out with a little fellas pick them. I still think we need to find a new name for that segment. Have you two come up with anything after I was gone last week? I put it all on Ty. It is 100% his job. Uh, he said he would. So, Ty, what did you come up with? Uh, uh, nothing. All right, he's off the podcast. This week. Unbelievable. Uh, Ty, you can leave. Deuces. We'll call, up, we'll call up our friend Alex Crusoe or something, see if he can come on quick. Uh, we're going to dive into the best and worst matchups ahead of week four. As I said, we're going to make sure you get all the best players in and out of your lineups this week. Let's dive on in. All right, if you're new to the podcast, how we typically do this. We start with the best matchups. We start, we'll do a round robin of running backs, do a round robin of wide receivers. We'll do a quarterback or tight end streamer of the week. Then we'll dive into the worst matchups. We'll wrap it up with a little fellas pick them there. But Cameron, I'll let you start us off here. What is your favorite running back matchup in week four? I'm taking the Broncos and Javante Williams versus the Bears. Um, this Bears team is bad. Uh, they are in the driver's seat for the number one overall pick. They are going to be sending Caleb Williams back to school for another year. That's how bad they have been. They are giving up 32.2 fantasy points a game to running back so far this season. That is second worst in the NFL. Only to the Broncos, which makes sense because the Broncos gave up 90 fantasy points last week to uh, Miami running back. Over 90 fantasy points. almost I think 100 fantasy points last week to Miami running backs. So that does make sense. Javante is currently averaging 12 carries and four targets a game. I think, you know, if he get, starts getting going, they're going to rely on him more because the Broncos have put up, you know, they put up 33 points in that commander's game, but they're not exact. You know, the offense isn't exactly firing on all cylinders. And I think after last week, they're going to want to keep the defense off the field as much as possible. So I think they're going to try and get Javante Williams involved and in against a, Leaky at best defense. Uh, I, I do find this to be a very good matchup for Javante Williams this week. Yeah, I think you could argue that Javante Williams definitely deserves to find the flex spot in your lineup uh, this week. Currently, they're running back 31 on the season in PBR mm-hmm. formats, uh, only averaging 3.8 yards per carry. I mean, again, we're not expecting that explosiveness right away after injury. We've seen Bree struggle with that, obviously, as well. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about him uh, in a little while. Um, how, who who would you consider starting him over this week? Because I do agree. I think he probably does need to find your lineup. But like, if I throw out a few names, let me let me pull up some handy dandy names here. We're gonna play a name game already. Who would you? Love who it. would you? <laughs> my favorite. Not even who, five minutes in, we're doing a name game already. Ty's <laughs> favorite. Ty's favorite. Oh. Uh, let's see. I'll just to throw out a few names. Uh, would you start him? Uh, I'm guessing you'd still start Ramondre against the Dallas Cowboys defense. Yeah, I would still still lean Ramondre. Yeah, Ramondre. Uh, and I would you start him over a guy like Brees Hall against Kansas City this week? I would. Uh, Brian Robinson or Javante Williams? I would lean Javante, actually. How about uh, DeAndre Swift versus Washington? Or I'm gonna, I'm not going to bet against the guys that are 150 rushing yards a game, so I'm going to go with DeAndre Swift. Okay. So th- just just to give, a, just give yeah. some ideas, because it's a lot of these like middling, like, I don't know, they're, I guess they could be okay this week kind of guys, but like, in this case, I think I would agree. I would rather go with the matchup favorite there uh, mm-hmm. being Javante Williams. Ty, I'll swing it to you. Your favorite running back matchup of the week um, it includes a guy that I am very much – I can't say I'm in love with because that sounds weird, but I, I love him in fantasy football. <laughs> you want to just show your jersey list at this point? I <laughs> 
<laughs> I may as well. I may as well pull it up. We we have come up with a nickname for this guy. The guy I'm talking about, James Cook. So I'm going to talk about Bills running backs against the Dolphins. And uh, we came up with a nickname for James Cook, Lucas. Uh, at, Jimothy how, Cook. Jimothy James Cook. Jimothy Cook. If you watched our YouTube videos when I talked about him as a start of the week back in week two, uh, I did refer to him as Jimothy Cook. The best cook. The, be- the best cook in the NFL right now. I would agree with that statement. Right now, yes. <laughs> That's no, like very big over disclaimer. their careers. <laughs> <laughs> very big disclaimer. But uh, James Cook, over the course of three weeks so far, has gotten more and more uh, uh, efficient in the run game so far. Obviously, week one was going to be tough against the Jets. Comes back week two against the Raiders. He puts up 123 rushing yards. Week three against a very, very good Washington front. He puts up 98 rushing yards. They get Miami this week. The Bills do. Part of me says this is a high-scoring game, but the other part of me says it's a divisional matchup. These these games typically don't score that many points. That being said, though, it's kind of the same logic I used. I don't know how long ago it was. Oh, it was the Lions against the Chiefs. There's one way to beat the Chiefs. You keep Patrick Mahomes off the field. There's pretty much one way to beat the Dolphins, and that's to keep the offense on the, on the sideline. So I'm expecting a good number of carries for James Cook. He's pretty much put up double digits every game this year. He gives you a receiving floor, too. Obviously, it does come with a disclaimer that he likely won't find the end zone because they continually put in, continuously put in, Latavius Murray and Damian Harris in goal line situations. And even if it is a James Cook opportunity at the end zone, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Allen says, nope, that's mine. I'm just going to take it. That being, that being said, though, the volume that he gets in receiving game, or I should say the amount of touches that he gets in a game, he's going to be efficient with. Don't be don't be scared off by all the recent performances by the, the uh, Dolphins defense. James Cook is pretty much – like locked into your lineup at this point. Don't Dieter Dieter Dieter. Wow. I can't talk Just put James Cook in your lineup. <laughs> Love it. Don't deter from him at this point. You geez. What, I was like, huh? Don't like Dieter. Sound right. <laughs> Don't Dieter. <laughs> I had a friend named Dieter in high school. Shout out to Dieter. Um, Shout out. James Cook though on the year. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think the upside's all in the receiving game. He's got 10 to 13 targets so far this year. Uh, and hyper efficient on the ground. He is averaging. Y'all know how many yard, yards per carry he's averaging? Take a guess. Oh, it's over five, isn't it? Five point six. Five point three. He's averaging six point one yards per carry. Oh, uh, so oh. if he keeps up that kind of efficiency and he stays involved in the passing game, I mean, you're looking at James Cook as a guy where running back scoring is still fairly low this year. It's not, you know, 10 guys who are putting up 20 points every single week. Like, it's a lot of guys. Like, Isaiah Pacheco, he put up 15.6 last week, and he was in running back 12. Like, James Cook can give you 13 this week, and he's probably going to be a top 20 running back. So, I really don't mind that start at all. I think Miami is a fine matchup for running backs. I actually will say, um, I, oh, man. I'll see how deep uh, into hot takes I want to get with my with my running backs. But my 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 favorite running back matchup of the week, uh, Seattle Seahawks running backs. You better fire them up against the New York Giants. Um, now, maybe maybe Zach Charbonnet should stay on your bench. But you just look at you look at what lead running backs for sure. This is more of a Ken Walker bit than anything else. You you look at what lead running backs have done to the Giants so far this year. Tony Pollard in week one, 14 for 70 and a touchdown. He scored 22.2 fantasy points. I was a running back five overall in the week. You look at James Conner, 23 for 106 and a score. 16.6 fantasy points on the week. That was a running back 15. Christian McCaffrey last week on Thursday Night Football, 18 for 85 and a score. 22.9 fantasy points per game. Oh, my goodness. The Giants, they've had the the ball run on them 85 times this year. That is the second most in the league. They have given up the fourth most rushing yards to running backs. I like Ken Walker. I know he said he could be a league loser this year. I know people are concerned about the snap counts, but like, my goodness, Ken Walker, he could put up another two touchdown day, be a top five running back on the week. Like he has just gotten handed favorable matchup after favorable matchup, and he has been capitalizing on it. So 
Ken Walker, I think, is in for a massive week this week. Uh, I have to finish up my running back rankings, but he's probably going to sniff top seven, top five for me this week, if we're being perfectly honest. And frankly, I like if you really want to flex Zach Charbonnet, I think the opportunity could be there for him this week. How do you how do you two feel about Zach Charbonnet moving forward? Because these snap counts are starting to get a little not uh, I'll say mysterious because I don't think it mur- mur- makes anything muddier for Ken Walker, but I don't think we can just ignore you know that Zach Charbonnet has started getting more and more run and he has looked like an absolute beast running through guys when he's out there. So, what what are your thoughts on Zach Charbonnet going into into week four? I think he's a guy that you're still looking at over the second half of the year. I think he can have, you know, if it's a, the right matchup like this and they decide, you know what, we're going to give him 50% of snaps. I think he can make something happen out of that. But I think he's a guy that when you start looking in at like week 13, 14, 15, I think him and Ken Walker could be, a, you know, a duo in the backfield who can both drop 15 in the same game. But I do think it's going to it's going to take towards the end of the year where you've got to kind of endure some of these weeks where you're like, man, he just put up three points. Like, why am I holding on to this guy? Just with the knowledge of the draft from the second round, he does look good. But Kenneth Walker is playing, you know, out of his mind right now. So there's going to be that balance at the same time. But I do think end of the year, you know, week 13, 12, 13, that that's going to be when we really start to see Zach Charbonne kind of find a real role in this offense. Yeah, I, I agree with the end of the year take. And I think what that means for the meantime is that Zach Charbonnet is just going to be a, a a very, very annoying thorn in the side of Ken Walker. We're getting to a point where I kind of wanted to throw the better and best ball label on Kenneth Walker because I think eventually it is going to be closer to a 50-50 split than it is right now. But Ken Walker is always a big play waiting to happen. He can he can break one off at any given moment. So it's it's going to be hard to predict when that happens. But Zach Charbonnet has been looking more and more confident, has been looking great with the touches he's getting so far. The Seahawks really don't have a reason to not play Charbonnet. So it's Ken Walker for the moment. But this is something you got to monitor moving forward week by week. I might have to change my pick at the end of the episode. Ken Walker, you want to take, take a guess. Here we go. We're going to guess the line. Now. We're playing a lot of games on today's episode. Guess the line. What's Ken Walker's projection set at on underdog fantasy for rush yards right now? 67 and a half. 58 and a half. 64 and a half. I'll shoot you right in the middle. Oh. I would. Oh my gosh. I'm so tempted to just smash yeah. the higher on that. That uh, based on what we have seen, from Tony Pollard has gone over. James Conner has gone over. Chris McCaffrey has gone over. Mm-hmm. Like this team just bleeds, bleeds yards to running back. So I am really tempted to go and take the Ken Walker higher there and switch up my pick. I'll see if I do that by the end of the episode. But um, that's over on Underdog Fantasy promo code, fellas. If you want to sign up over there, uh, they're going to give you a free square of half a total yard on a player when you sign up with our code. They're also going to give you a deposit match up to. $500. Yes, I said 500. Promo code fellows on Underdog Fantasy. If you want to go check out their lines, get a free square along the way as well. Uh, let's actually take a quick break. We'll hear from them over there. We'll explain their, their pick and process a little bit, and we'll come back with more uh, favorable matchups. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Now, we love Underdog. It is the easiest place to play best ball formats, and they even have their own form of player props called Pick'em. You can make up to 20 times your money on a single night by correlating props together. Two picks will triple your money, three will six times it, four will ten times it, and five plays that all hit will multiply your entry by 20. You can even place insurance on your picks too, so if only four of your five props hit, you still get ten times your entry. And if you use our code FELLAS when signing up, Underdog is going to double your first deposit up to $100. Alrighty, we are back and we are going to continue breaking down the best matchups ahead of week four of fantasy football. We're going to transition to wide receivers now. Cameron, your favorite wide receiver matchup of the week. This one I think was easy. It's uh, the Bengals versus the Titans, and we have talked all season long. We talked all last season about targeting the Titans secondary, and they were terrible last year. They were the worst 
um, against fancy wide receivers. And guess what? They are currently fourth worst against fancy wide receivers again this season. Uh, they just gave up a big week to uh, Mari Cooper last um, last week. And I think that if we're going to see the first week of the season where Jamar Chase and T Higgins both put up decent games, you know, where you're not like, oh, wow, why did I draft one of these guys? I think it's going to gonna be against these Titans. Um, you know, they just have continually struggled. And I think the Bengals offense is finally starting to, you know, move the ball a little bit more. Last week, they threw the ball a ridiculous amount of times. I think Joe Burrow is just going to have to really trust and lean on um, lean on his wide receivers in this one. And I think they're both much better than the secondary they're up against. So I think that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, th- this isn't like a hot take. No. Favorable matchup. This is like Jamar put up 24 last week. T Higgins will have, T. Higgins will have a bounce back week this week. Mm-hmm. This is a, a fire him up. Maybe even more of a sneaky, like this is actually just like an anti-Joe Mixon bit in surprise mm-hmm. or in disguise, not surprise. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're firing up Jamar Chase. You're firing up T. Higgins and they could be in for colossal weeks this week. I couldn't agree more. I think we can just leave it at that. Ty, yep. I'll let you... Uh, discuss your favorite wide receiver matchup ahead of week four. It's the Texans versus the Steelers. Okay. And it has been widely talked about that tank Dell is one of the biggest must adds on the waiver wire this week after he put up, I don't remember the finish off the top of my head, but he had 25 and a half fantasy points. Hey, there it is. 145 big, receiving big, yards. Big touchdown. Tank guy. Yeah, big, big, tank <laughs> big tank guy over yeah. there. Um, Nico Collins. I know he took kind of a backseat in the game against Jacksonville. I'm not concerned about that. I'm not. I don't think that means anything in terms of oh, Tank Dell is going to take over. You know, a Nico Collins production level or anything like that. No, like Nico Collins and Tank Dell are going to be relevant, are going to be productive in fantasy moving forward. And Bobby Trees has flown under the radar. And uh, Cam Cam said it perfectly before we started talking and recording. Bobby Trees is a perfect DFS DFS dart throw of the week. The guy gets targets. Does he find the end zone? We haven't seen it yet. It could happen. Maybe it happens this week. And if it does, hey, 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 that's all the more, that's all the better for you in DFS. But the Steelers are allowing the fifth most fantasy points on average over the last two weeks to receivers. Week one, Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver two finish, 129 yards, two touchdowns. Debo, that same game, had five receptions, seven targets, 55 yards. So nothing great but still seven targets is pretty decent mark cooper then in week two 10 targets 90 yards flex finish because he didn't score but week three Devonte adams 13 receptions 20 targets 172 yards two touchdowns and jacoby myers also had 12 targets 85 yards this secondary just leaks yards and if i had it if i had to describe the steelers defense to you so far kind of putting tj watt aside because the, the dude's a beast he, if you ever find a you know a higher lower half sack prop line on tj watt take the take the higher every single time okay but this Steelers defense is a bend but don't break defense so they will leak yards they will leak catches they may not give up the most scores as i you know i you score twice adam score twice but they leak yards and catches and That's all that you really need to say, you know, as a decent start in your lineup. I mean, Tank is going to get a good load of a a, a good, decent amount of receptions. Nico is also going to come through for you. Like, I think you you hear Texan Steelers and you go, "Ooh, I don't, I don't really like that." This Texans passing offense is a lot better than we could have expected. Go ahead and start Nico Collins. Go ahead and start Tank Dell. And I hope you're not in the situation where you picked up both, where you have both Nico and Tank Dell because that's a sucky place to be in. But both our starts, Texans wide receivers are a great matchup this week against the Steelers. I think you can 100% start Texans wide receivers this week. I'm not, I'm not terrified to start Texans wide receivers against the Steelers this week, mostly because we've seen them. CJ Stroud has looked incredibly competent. I Tank Dell with Noah Brown out, Snapshot has gone up tremendously. Score 20-plus fantasy points in both of the games that Noah Brown has been out. 
I mean, this is 100%. I think you can start both Texans wide receivers in the flex this week, and you can feel good about it. I don't know if you can like 100% feel great about it. I don't think you'll ever feel like great about starting any Texans player in your fantasy lineup. Uh, probably like you'll never feel great about starting Carolina Panthers wide receivers in your lineup. But you know what? You have to this week. You have to against the Minnesota Vikings, my favorite wide receiver matchup of the week. Look, Minnesota, they're allowing 53.3 fantasy points per game to wide receivers this year. That is the third most. Keenan Allen torched him for 45 last week in PPR formats. Byron Murphy. Correct me if I'm wrong, fellas. He gave up 180 plus yards in coverage last week. Yep. Is that stack correct? Yes. Per PFF. He's supposed to be their best corner. <laughs> what? I this secondary is atrocious. They've allowed a wide receiver to go for at least 18 fantasy points in every single game this year. Three wide receivers against the Vikings have gone for 20-plus. Devonta Smith, um, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams have all gone for 23 or more fantasy points against the Vikings. If Andy Dalton, if he is forced to throw another 58 times this week, because you know Kirk's going to keep up, all the Vikings do is pass the ball. This is like deep sleeper. Shoot. What, what, you're, what are you going to pause me there? Yeah, Bryce Young is supposed to start. I don't care. <laughs> I, Adam Thielen, he's in my flex this week. I'm very comfortable with Adam Thielen as a flex this week. Are you too? Yeah, I'd fire him up. I think you have to. I, 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 I will only because it's a revenge game against Minnesota. Oh, here, there, there it is. I was hoping one of you would say it's an Adam Thielen revenge game. He, you have to fire him up. He, he put up 21 with Bryce in week two. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's not like we haven't seen Adam Thielen perform with Bryce Young. So. Mm-hmm. Look, fire up Carolina Panthers wide receiver. I, I think there's opportunity for DJ Chark here as well. Maybe yeah. a little sneaky Jonathan Mingo. I don't if think you should fire up Jonathan Mingo, but like, like it, it, he'll probably make uh, when I do my waiver wire stash videos for, for fantasy pros this week. Uh, I'm probably going to throw Jonathan Mingo on there because it's too good of a matchup and he's probably going to be a very popular waiver wire ad after playing the Vikings this week. So I would go ahead and stash him now. This is just too good of a matchup. And I think this could be a sneaky, sneaky. What, what's the uh, over under on this game? Do we know that off the top of our head? Do not the over under or the spread? Uh, or do you over want under. Both? I want to go to a point 45 points. Uh, Minnesota is currently favored by three and a half. Uh, over under is, is 45 points. I think it could, I think this game could go over 45 points. I mean, perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, you're hesitant on that. I just think, I, I just think, think any Vikings game, game can go over 45. Oh, 100%. That's exactly it. Like, there's opportunity for it. Hmm. If we're yeah. looking for the sneaky shootout of the week, I kind of like that. that sneaky shootout of the week, uh, I, I would pick this game. My my one thought that I had just looking and and thinking about Panthers versus Vikings, this Panthers offensive line is not very great. They have what the four? I just checked. They have the fourth worst graded offensive line per PFF. Minnesota's pass rush and all the blitzing that they do, they have not been getting home. If Minnesota can get home to Bryce Young, does that affect the receivers? And my answer to that is, well, no. What we saw last week was that Adam Thielen was very much using crossers and very much in the short game. That's going to help out Bryce Young if he has a quick and open target so he can get the ball out quick and doesn't have to sit and pat and then wait for you know pressure to get to him. But that was that, that was just my thought process. It may not be super straightforward, but knowing knowing this team, we're gonna let the Panthers hang around for a while and then we're gonna lose on like a 55 yard field goal to Eddie Pinero. Like that's just how it's gonna work. Yeah. You bring up- you, you bring up the Panthers' offensive line. How much better is the Vikings' defensive line? Let's be honest. Yeah, Daniel Hunter. DJ Wanham. He, he hasn't been that great this year. Currently currently 51.9 grade. <laughs> Lord knows Pat Jones ain't it. 28.7. Yeah. Andre Carter. <laughs> 54.6. Like, it's not like this Vikings' defensive line is any better. So, sure, could, could Daniel Hunter make some noise? He's been great this year. Leads the league in sacks. But, I mean, outside of that, like, I don't – this Viking team is just so bad. And you could look at the linebackers or they can bring the blitz, which they could do, but 
I, I don't know, man. Fire just, just fire up Carolina Panthers wide receivers. That's what I'm mostly trying to get out here. The matchup is too good. Yeah, I I saw a stat too today. Uh Daniel Hunter's got five and a half stat sacks. No other Vikings, uh no other Viking has a full sack recorder or more. Everyone is at She's half a sack stupid. or less. And the other the other thing is that Adam Thielen is going to play very similar to the way that Keenan Allen plays. Of yes. he's not going to beat you deep. He's not going to beat you, you know, but he's going to be able to read the zone. He's going to know where to sit down. And that's exactly what you need to beat the Vikings. Um, he could end up with, you know, eight catches for 80 yards and never do anything super special on the field, but have a really good fantasy week. But I do want to ask Ty a question since he's the only unbiased one because he doesn't have a player of this. Javante Williams or Adam Thielen this week? I lean Thielen on that one. All right. I'm going to take the PVR points there. No, that makes sense. for sure. Most times, if I'm looking at a flex spot, I'm gonna I'm gonna favor the guy who's who's catching passes versus yep. a running back. But in some cases, I think you could definitely start the running back there. But all right, let's keep it moving. Let's do uh, quarterback or tight end stream of the week. If you're in a pinch, these are guys who have good matchups that you could go ahead and stream if you need to at either the quarterback or tight end position. Cameron, who's your pick for the week? Well, I picked a tight end last week, and uh, it went horribly wrong. Adam Trentman was terrible. Uh, I will never, never be talking about tight ends again. Leave that to show. me. I'll talk tight ends. Uh, they all suck. Uh, that is all you need to know. Uh, but, so I'm going to go with the quarterback, and I'm going to go with Daniel Jones. He has finished 28th on the week, first on the week, 30th on the week. So if we're doing the math, he's going to finish first overall again this week. That is my analysis. That is all you needed. I'm just kidding. Uh, he is playing the Seahawks. We're giving up the 10th most uh, fantasy points to quarterbacks. And the Seahawks D line is ranked 29th, according to our friends over at Fantasy Life. And I think that's been the biggest problem so far for the Giants against both the Cowboys and the um, 49ers is just the fact that Daniel Jones has no time. He c- couldn't get the ball off because he's just got D linemen in his lap the entire game. And so I think just being able to have time, being able to move out of the pocket, I think is going to be really big for him because, you know, if we're being honest, that's where when he has his big weeks, that's where it comes from is on the ground when he can put up 70 rushing yards in a game. And so I think that's something that we could see from Daniel Jones this week. So that is why I think that he is going to have a little bit of a bounce back and be a good streaming option. Ty, your quarterback tight end stream is actually a tight end. And I won't take any tight end slander, especially from the guy who Fake loves <laughs> I Fake swear fan. he does it just for show he does it it's just a bit no Gerald Everett okay if we're gonna take a tight end stream I'm gonna bet on Gerald Everett because I think there's a chance he gets more work with Mike Williams out of the lineup yes Josh Palmer is gonna be a thing Quinn Johnson is gonna have more opportunities but there's a chance that I think that Gerald Everett gets more involved in the offense. And I'm just looking at split count or snap counts and stuff. And Gerald Everett and Donald Parham have pretty much been like splitting carries or sorry, carries. Carries, snaps helmet helmet. I wouldn't be surprised if Gerald Everett starts to increase the, the difference in snap count between him and Donald Parham, just because Mike Williams is out and Gerald Everett seventh and, uh, yards per route run of all tight ends. That was the metric I brought up about Sam Laporta, and boom, look what he did. Gerald Everett was also a yard or two away from finding the end zone against the Vikings. That's the other thing. We are like we are like this close to seeing Gerald Everett having a very very good week. So, I think if you're going to look for a tight end stream and a true stream, like one that needs a lot of convincing, Gerald Everett is that one. Is is the stream? Kane's bet. Hmm? Donald Parham outscores Gerald Everett this week. On a Canes meal? Sure. All right. Done deal. We need a drop for that. I, mean, <laughs> I want to turn this turning down. I, I think Donald Parham could outscore Gerald Everett. I, I think he's a fine stream this week, but uh, I go, I might put my faith in Donald Parham. I know it's like you know two for four and two touchdowns, but <laughs> but still, uh, the week we want it to be Gerald Everett, it's always Donald Parham. Mm-hmm. I, I do want to defend the uh, slander that was Put against my name about being a fake fan a little here uh, earlier. Uh, <laughs> the only reason I'm a fan of Gerald Everett is because I hate the rest of the tight ends, and he's the only one available at the end. Oh, of the that's why I like Gerald Everett. We he's are backpedaling. All tight ends are gross. All of them are gross. <laughs> no, not not my tight end stream of the week. Yes, Luke is. Musgrave. <laughs> Luke Musgrave. He, that man is not gross. That man. Oh my goodness, he is my rookie tight end crush this year, and I can't believe I am falling for all these rookie tight ends again. But. 
my gosh, him and Sam Laporta have, have given me reason to have hope. Uh, look, Detroit, it, this is just too good of a matchup. They've allowed the most receiving yards, yards, targets, receptions, fantasy points per game. You name it. They've allowed the most, the most to tight ends this year. This is just too good of a spot. Uh, Thursday night football, I would feel very comfortable starting up Luke Musgrave this week if you are in a bind at the tight end position. Luke Musgrave, he'll probably be like a top 10 tight end for me this week. Top 8 even, maybe, depending on how bad some of these matchups are. That That's crazy that they're allowing the most and they didn't even have to play Travis Kelsey week one. No, all right. And that's that was the only time they were actually decent against tight ends. Yeah. So <laughs> every other week scored. they have they have been peace of heart. So this is this is a great matchup for Luke Musgrave. I, I fully expect the Lions to or the the Packers, excuse me, to take advantage of that. Let's move on to worst matchups of the week. We can cruise through these because mm-hmm. I don't like talking bad about players, but at the same time you have to know uh, which matchups are good and bad for your lineups. Most of these guys are, you're you're probably going to consider sitting this week unless if you. Don't have any other options. But Cameron, let's start with running backs. Who is your least favorite running back matchup of the week? I'm going to try this again. The last time I did this, uh, Brian Robinson finished as the running back one overall. (laughs) Uh, That's because the Broncos are fraudulent. This Eagles defense is not. Brian Robinson is the running back eight. but The Eagles are giving up less than 50 rushing yards a game and haven't given up a rushing touchdown yet. Robinson is a volume play. He has been. We saw that last week. Um he only got 10 carries and he didn't even he didn't put up uh, double digit points but he is he i i, ugh, I can't talk i do think he is going to get the volume this week i just don't think there's going to be any efficiency if we watched um you know Rashad White last week Alexander Madison the week before um they just nothing going on up the uh up the middle going on just anywhere and i don't i would be shocked if he finds the end zone in this one so i am out on Brian Robinson I would just like to victory lap real quick during the draft or in our draft live stream. I was highly critical of Chicago trading back one spot for a fourth round pick this year to take Darnell, Wright Instead of taking Jalen Carter and by golly, Jalen Carter looks the real insane. deal. He yeah, looks, yeah. Insane. <laughs> looks like Everything he might be the best player in the draft. Yeah. I I just a a small mini victory lap because Jalen Carter is a big reason why this Philly defense is just shutting everyone down in the run game. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just very seldom you add a talent of Carter's caliber to such an elite defensive line. And you just knew it was going to wreak absolute havoc this year. So yeah, no Ryan Robinson, like he's a guy, like, again, we talked about, I would start Javante Williams over this week. I would favor Mm -hmm. the matchup over what we've seen from Ryan Robinson. Mm Mm-hmm so far this year. Ty, over to you. Your least favorite running back matchup of the week. It's the Ravens versus the Browns. Um, Browns are allowing the second fewest fantasy points on average to running backs. And it's a split backfield. It's Justice Hill and Gus Bus, Gus Edwards. And in the one game that we've seen so far this year with Justice Hill and Gus Edwards, 10 carries for Gus Edwards, zero receptions. And yes, he had 62 rushing yards in a, in a rushing touchdown, but that's not the, the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> Justice Hill, though, had 11 carries and three receptions in a close game. The Browns are built to stop the run, so that's why I didn't really me- I didn't want to mention the the yards and the rushing touchdown for Gus Edwards because I, we're not going to see six yards a carry from Gus Edwards. <laughs> Justice Hill is going to steal carries from Gus Edwards that you want to see. He's going to get receptions, but I I. I just don't want to bet on a split backfield against one of the best run defenses in the league. Like I it's a divisional matchup. So there's a chance that, you know, it is just smash mouth football. But I, again, I just don't want to bet on, on a split backfield in a game like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. uh, I have no interest in the Ravens backfield. Literally no interest. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Browns are truly, their, their defense just looks so good, man. And when we don't know if it's Gus, when we don't know uh, if, if it's Hill, if it's freaking Melvin Gordon, it could be one week. We don't know. Like, we just don't know who it's going to be. So, yeah, no, mm-hmm. I, I am 100% out. I want nothing to do with Ravens running backs this week. I would also argue, though, this might be most weeks that I don't want to deal with Ravens running backs. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, mm-hmm. Unless, unless, let's recklessly speculate a little bit. Jonathan Taylor 
winds up in Baltimore because they're not going to pay J.K. Dobbins at this point. And I'll totally mess around with them then. Yeah, if if, <laughs> if that happens, Baltimore is back on my radar. But until then, I don't want to deal with that at all. Yep. One team Jonathan Taylor won't end up on. I, I, the segue was pretty weak, honestly. Uh, Jets running backs against the Chiefs this week. <laughs> we don't know that yet, Lucas. They could. <laughs> <laughs> For all we know. <laughs> just run three running backs. I feel like when I just make a wild terrible segue. Wildcat, wildcat. <laughs> I feel like when I just make a terrible segue like that, I'm just like, yeah, I'm the worst worst segue of the week. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Taylor won't end up on the Jets. Uh, they're playing the Kansas City Chiefs this week. Um, look, the Chiefs have only around allowed one running back to score more than eight fantasy points this year. Uh, Ty, you want to take a guess on who it was? It's your guy. It was David Montgomery. It was David Montgomery who was saved yeah. by a touchdown. Otherwise, he would have only had 7.4 fantasy points on the week. This Chiefs defense is very, very tough against the run. Uh, I don't think we give the Chiefs enough credit for how good of an stingy of a defense they actually are. And you add that how good that defense is to how big of a mess this Jets backfield is. Obviously, we saw Brees and Dalvin split four and four in week two last week. Brees went for 12 or 12 rushing attempts for 18 yards in week three. Dalvin went eight for 18. So this is still a mess. Neither back is efficient. Zach Wilson is still the quarterback of this team. And as long as he's the quarterback of this team, uh, you better believe everybody is going to say, go ahead. Zach Wilson against our cornerbacks. We don't care who they are. Zach Wilson is probably worse. And that you know that's what the Chiefs are going to do this week. And I hear I hear a lot of people saying that Brees Hall is a buy low candidate this week. I say why? Not because I don't think he's a buy low candidate, because I think he will get better as the year goes on, but I also think he's going to be a buy low candidate next week as well. So why are you wasting more resources when he's probably going to put up another dud this week. Now you're playing a little bit of a game there of like, all right, does he truly have as bad of a week? Does he not? I'd be willing to bet he does. So why are you wasting more resources when you can probably get him at even more of a discount after he flops against the chiefs this next week? So I don't know what you two think on that. Would you rather go out and try and buy Reese hall low right now? And like low being like low because he hasn't given you a reason to pay up for the, you know, fourth round, price tag you you drafted him at but like are you are you trying to go acquire Brees now are you gonna wait a week are you not trying to go and acquire Brees I, I that's a name that's just being tossed around a lot this week and I'm not sure I entirely agree that you need to go out and get Brees this week I'd be sending offers for Brees but I wouldn't feel like a rush to acquire Brees Hall this week I think there's you know certain times where you know a guy like a Jalen Waddle this week I would right, be rushing right, right. to try to get yes. him this week. Whereas Brees, I might send out some offers, but if I don't get anything I you know like, then I'm I'm not gonna try and force a trade to get Brees on my team, knowing that he's playing the Chiefs this week. My thing comes down to as long as the current quarterback stays as the current quarterback, Brees Hall's value is just going to continue. It's that's redundant It's going to continue to fall. Like this, this offense is just not going to be good. And until they make a change, I don't really want to deal with Brees Hall. I don't really want to make a trade because I don't know when it's just going to get better then because teams are just going to play the run. So I now look, we've seen the jets offense be better with Joe Flacco. We've seen it be better with Mike White. Does Trevor Simeon <laughs> take this team to new levels? No, I, I think the situation is Absolutely. still the same. <laughs> I, I think it's still the same, unfortunately, where teams will say, go ahead, Trevor Simeon, beat us. Yeah. And then, I, I, unfortunately, he's not that much better than, than Zach Wilson. Yeah, I, back to your question, though, Lucas. Like In the context of like this week versus next week, it, wait a week, wait a week. It's just going to get worse. Yeah, I, I just don't feel the need to go out and rush and send offers for Brees. Like I like I'm I'm fine if you want to cast a few, you know, a few lines out and, and see who bites, but like is Brees gonna be available next week? Yeah, he's gonna be available next week. I don't know what the rush is. I think the Jalen Waddle example is a perfect one, Cameron, that you brought up of like there are some guys where like the window is now. Jalen Waddle, the window is now fresh off concussion, only averaging 12 fantasy points over the first two weeks. Like he's a guy where 
after this next week on the hottest offense in the NFL, yeah, I want that guy this week before you know, he could go for 16, 17, 18 this next week, and all of a sudden you got to pay you know market price again. Um, same with a guy like Christian Watson, right? Drafted very high. People were very high on him to start the year. Now hasn't played for the first three weeks. Comes back on Thursday night. I, I'm willing to try and go out and throw a few offers, see if I can get him. And if he puts up 16, 17, 18 on Thursday night, guess what? You're paying market price again. So I don't like the, the market price is already way, way low from where Reese Hall was drafted. I don't think you're losing anything by waiting a week. So yeah. all that to say, Reese Hall, not a good matchup this week. I am sitting him 100% this week. Um, just to wrap out that bit. I, he, he was one that I wanted to make sure we touched on because I I've seen that a lot. I kind of want to correct what some of the market might be saying on Brees in terms of buying him low now, when I think you can honestly just get him at the same price, if not lower next week. All right, let's, uh, let's fly through wide receiver matchups here. Cameron, your least favorite wide receiver matchup for week four. It's going to be the Cardinals wide receiver against San Francisco. I think the Cardinals very much outperformed uh, what they're, I, th- I want to say, capable of um, uh, against Dallas last week. Now they are going to play against the San Francisco defensive line, which has just dominated um, in San Francisco. I know that Matthew Stafford and the Rams, you know, they put a pretty good uh, fantasy point numbers, right? Puka had what, uh, his 20 target game against the 49ers. But I, Matt Stafford is a very different quarterback than Josh Dobbs. And I think Matt Stafford is a guy who's used to constantly playing under pressure, constantly having a guy in his face of, with all of his years in Detroit, where I just don't think Josh Dobbs has that same experience. And so I am going to bet that the San Francisco defense is going to be just a little too overwhelming for the Cardinals to put up a pretty decent game. I mean, they even had a pretty decent game in week two, or at least decent first half. So I I don't want to bet that the you know these Cardinals wide receivers are going to do it three, years, three weeks in a row. So... I am going to be looking elsewhere than Hollywood, Rondell Moore, and if you are really hurting, Michael Wilson. Go for it, Ty. You were going to add something there. I was going to throw something out and then transition because I was going to use the same kind of argument. So if you want to add your thoughts first, you should probably go. I mean, I don't have none. It, it Basically, I'm looking at it as this Arizona Cardinals offensive line versus the San Francisco 49ers defensive line. Josh Dobbs just isn't going to have the time that I that I think he he's going to need, you know, to get the ball off to to complete some of these. Now again, you can make the same case while well, they did it against Dallas last week. Well, yeah, yeah. but I, again, like Cameron said, I don't think it happens two weeks in a row. I don't think yeah. you I don't think you strike lightning isn't going to hit the same twice. Uh, doesn't hit twice in the same location. That's the saying I was going for. Um, so now I'll kick it over to you, Ty, because uh, you can go ahead and, and parlay that argument into your least favorite wide receiver matchup of the week. Yeah, San Francisco plays some of the most man coverage of any team in the league. In Arizona, wide receivers have not produced against man coverage. Like it, it is a it is abysmal. Like third lowest, I think it is against man coverage. Like it's just ugly. That's one you got to avoid. And with that same logic, my worst matchup is the Jets wide receivers against the Chiefs. And it may seem like we're picking on the Jets at this point, and we are. I mean, we are. We're picking on a jet. A well, <laughs> yes, a jet, and as a result, we're picking on all the other jets. But um, Kansas City plays zone coverage a ton, and like majority of teams play more zone coverage than man coverage, so that shouldn't be a shocking point. But when you play zone coverage about eighty-four percent of the time, you don't. You're not relying on man coverage at all. You know what team puts up the least amount of fantasy points against zone coverage? It's the Jets. <laughs> it's the Jets. So Garrett Wilson, this is the week that he that you put him on your bench. Alan Lazard should have been dropped weeks ago. Kansas City over the last two weeks, they've allowed the second fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. They've allowed the fourth fewest receptions. This is a this is an easy easy avoid i'll wrap it up here i think this is another easy avoid at the wide receiver position this week too mostly because the offense is just really bad but i think part of it is the defense are going up against as well tennessee titans wide receivers against the cincinnati Bengals this week i really don't want anything to do with deandre hopkins don't want anything to do with Traylon burks this week and as i said part of it is just how abysmal this titans offense is that they can't literally can't get anything going 
The other part of it is I do think the Bengals defense is pretty good. They've given up the seventh fewest yards to wide receivers this year. They only gave up one touchdown to the position as well. They slowed down. They slowed down my boy, my hero, Pukunakua last week. Granted, he went for 72 receiving yards uh, on five receptions, I believe. Uh, So it wasn't a bad day, but considering some of the other performances we saw this week, it it honestly wasn't enough to really crack your starting lineup or make it seem worthwhile to, to what his day could have been. And I would say this Rams offense is definitely better than the Tennessee Titans offense this year. So I'm going to go ahead and bet against the Tennessee Titans offense in a matchup that I think is actually more difficult than the I meets wide receivers. They've also only caught 33 of 60 targets versus the Bengals this year. Now, could that be about the quarterbacks? Maybe like Deshaun Watson in week one, he didn't throw the ball a ton. Wasn't all that accurate. Either Lamar in week two Stafford week three. I mean, part of it could be that sure, but I mean, honestly, I am I have no interest in, in playing DeAndre Hopkins and Traylon Brooks. He is, gosh, he's nowhere near flux consideration for me. So this is a matchup I am very, very much looking to avoid playing DeAndre Hopkins in this week uh, if, if I can help it. All right, that wraps out the best and worst matchups ahead of week four. Fellas, let's bring it home with a little bit of fellas back. We're not doing too hot. Change as well. Only three on the year. <laughs> well, we're we're doing okay on other ones that we've done ourselves. Right. It's right. not this one. <laughs> right. I was about to say the, the one where we collaborate, not doing too hot. We've all had our fair share of greens this year on our own personal tickets that we've uh, that we've submitted. We're all we're all up on the year in terms of units, but uh, on the podcast we cannot put it all together, unfortunately. Um, so. Uh, with that being said, let's dive in. Let's look at some of the projections our friends over at Underdog Fantasy have going for week four of fantasy football. If you want to go check those out, sign up with the code FELLAS. They're going to give you a free square of half a total yard for a mysterious player uh, playing in Sunday's matchups when you sign up. They're also going to give you a deposit match up to $500. Yes, five zero zero dollars as well Cameron I'll let you kick things off here who are you going to submit for our first pick of the slip he was a buy low with my buy low video that came out yesterday uh and it is Mr. Jerry Judy to be higher than 53 and a half receiving yards he hit was five for 80 again that Miami game and Cortland Sutton seemed to be the wide receiver one as Judy still get back from his hamstring injury but had two awful fumbles and just let a touchdown go right through his hands in the end zone. I think the Cortland Sutton train is going to be slipping a little bit more. And as Judy gets back to full health, he gets a, like I said earlier, terrible bears team. So I think he easily goes over a higher than 53 and a half yards. Jerry Judy, higher than 53 and a half receiving yards is the first entry in the slip tie over to you. Who are you going to pick for our second entry on this slot? I'm going Amari Cooper higher than four and a half receptions against the Ravens. Uh, Amari has gone over four and a half receptions twice in the one game. He didn't, he had seven targets. So there was opportunity to go over that in the, as well. And that game was a blowout too, because that was week one against the Bengals. So they didn't really need to throw the ball late into the game and stuff. Um, Baltimore is allowing the most receptions over the last two weeks to receivers. And uh, the other part of this too, Amari Cooper's receiving yards line started off at like 55, 56 and a half on the day that we recorded this. And as we're recording it right now, it has gone up to 60 and a half. Oh, so, oh. so in the 48 minutes, it's jumped up four yards. It's jumped up four yards, but the receptions line hasn't gone up either. Like, that I I'm I don't know why the receptions wouldn't go up either, but four and a half is a smash higher for me this week. Amari Cooper higher than four and a half receptions. It's the second entry in this slip. I will bring it home, fellas. You all are going hires. I know I said I was debating making Ken Walker higher than 64 and a half rushing yards in my final entry, but I am not. Zach Wilson, lower than 177 and a half 
passing yards this week against the Kansas City Chiefs. Ty, you brought it up. This, this team stinks against zone coverage. I can already see it. This is going to be a three interception week for Zach Wilson. If he can't figure out this zone coverage, oh my gosh, the Chiefs, the Chiefs secondary and linebackers could absolutely feast this week. If there is a week where, where Zach Wilson gets yanked from a game because he is playing so terribly because the Jets are so far behind, would it not be this week? So part of me is like, I just get a free win because if Zach Wilson gets yanked, yeah, you know, I assuming he doesn't get to 177 and a half passing yards, uh, he's going to get yanked. The other part of me is Zach Wilson hasn't hit this mark yet this year. <laughs> even, even, well, let me, let me try, even in his toughest matchup with the Dallas Cowboys, he threw for 170. The Chiefs are giving up 189 passing yards per game to quarterbacks this year. You better believe I'm going to take the the, the 12-yard buffer on Zach Wilson uh, because I do not think he will come close to hitting 189, and I'm very comfortable taking the lower on 177.5. So that is my last entry in this slip. Zach Wilson, lower than 177.5 passing yards. All I could think of that whole time was the Mortal Kombat finish him. Just like, finish him. <laughs> I was only like, we threw a jab with the Jets running backs. We threw a jab with the Jets wide receivers, and then we landed on the game maker with Zach Wilson. <laughs> Little did you know, we were building up to that this entire episode. I just tried to play it off with the Ken Walker bit. <laughs> Uh, Our final, um, final entry, Jerry Judy, higher than 53 and a half receiving yards. Uh, Amari Cooper, higher than four and a half receptions. Zach Wilson, lower than 177 and a half passing yards. One unit to win six over on Underdog Fantasy. Again, sign up with the code, fellas. They will give you a free square, a mystery free square of half total yard. That is a free win. You could throw that onto these picks and all of a sudden you'd, you'd sacrifice one unit to win 10. Uh, make sure you do that. Code fellas. They will also match your first deposit up to $500. Again, promo code fellas. Make sure to go check out our friends over at underdog fantasy. We love them, support them because they support us. Anything we want to add before we close out the show, fellas. Zach Wilson sucks. Drew holiday did not deserve to be betrayed by the Milwaukee bucks. All right. We're diving into basketball now. <laughs> wrong, wrong target audience, wrong target audience. Uh, <laughs> Make sure if you want uh, to have your trades reviewed, if you want any extra eyes on trades, on start set decisions for the week, you can join our chalkboard. That's where our community is being hosted. That's where we have a higher chance of seeing your questions, a higher opportunity for someone else, one of our other followers to see your questions. You can check that out down in the link in the description of this podcast or YouTube video that you are listening to. FF fellas on Twitter, the FF fellas on Instagram, fantasy football fellas here on Facebook or here on YouTube, excuse me, Facebook and TikTok. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, make sure you do that. Turn on those notifications. Literally, literally, potentially three videos on a given day. Two to three videos every single day we are releasing for you all. If you're listening to the podcast, hey, thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind leaving us a nice little review, help helps scoot us up the rankings a little bit, but we also love to hear from you all why you love the show, your favorite parts of the show. Uh, that means a lot to us, keeps us going over here as well. I'm at Lucas Wentzel on Twitter, Cam Law, FFF, Tyler underscore Plath. We will be back tomorrow with some must starts. I will be releasing a YouTube video of must start players. Those have been on fuego recently. If you've been watching our must start videos, those have been on fuego this year. So make sure you tune into that. Otherwise, we will be back with another podcast episode to recap the 10 biggest takeaways from week four of the NFL season. Take care. Stay safe. Again, make sure you're staying up to date with all of our videos. Turn on those notifications, y'all. We will see you all next week. Deuces. Deuces. Deuces.